Hi everyone, Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com, here to bring you a live session of our spirit chat. This is a chance for you to participate in a group coaching session and get your questions answered regarding your spiritual development and developing your spiritual path. Hi, thanks for joining. So the kind of questions that you can ask are in regards to spell casting, making magic, folk magic, candle magic, divination, as well as developing your intuition, trusting your intuition, developing your spiritual gifts, your psychic abilities, developing your relationship with your ancestors, your spirit guides, your guardian spirits, your guardian angels, dream work and meditation, and all kinds of things related and in between. Hi, Tenacious TJ, welcome, thanks for joining. Hello, the Casino Gang, thanks for joining. Who else is here so far? Hi, everyone, thanks for joining. Rosales, Emma. JC, Moji, hi, thanks for joining. So if you haven't been here before, this is a chance for you to participate in a group coaching session and ask any questions that you may have about your spiritual development and developing your spiritual path. I'm happy to see you all here. I always look forward to these chats. I always really enjoy our conversations and really enjoy talking with you and interacting with you. So go ahead and ask me questions if you have them. I hope you're all doing well and having a beautiful weekend. Happy to see you too. It's The weather is nice here. It's nice and sunny today. It's in the mid 50s. There's a little chill in the air, but it's really nice and sunny and you can tell that spring is on the way. It's a little late. Spring is a little late this year to, uh, to come to Austin, Texas. So we've had, um, it hasn't been particularly cold, but the cooler season has lasted longer than usual. So I think um, most Texans are probably overdue for spring at this point. Um, of course, I'm from Michigan and I know spring is a, a ways off there, um, but the people there are probably, my friends and family, they're probably overdue for spring as well. So I'm hoping everyone has some sunshine and people are staying warm and having a safe weekend. Thanks for joining. If you haven't been here before, the live spirit chat is a chance for you to participate in a free group coaching session and ask any questions that you might have to gain assistance for your spiritual development, developing your spiritual path, developing your spiritual practice, trusting and using and strengthening your intuition, trusting, using, and strengthening your psychic abilities, your spiritual gifts, uh, working with your ancestors, your spirit guides, your guardian spirits, uh, doing divination, practicing magic, fire magic, folk magic, dream work, and meditation, and all kinds of things related and in between. I'm gonna go ahead and drink some tea while I'm waiting for those questions to roll in. And if you're taking a moment to kind of collect yourself, maybe you can think about some of the things that you've been working on lately in your spiritual development, maybe in your spiritual path, and what kinds of questions or confusions have arisen for you, and I'll be happy to do my best to shed some light there. I'm discovering Southern Conjure currently reading the Conjure Workbook Volume 1. Do I have to set up altars to practice? I don't feel comfortable with anyone seeing this new path as it's not traditional to my family. You don't necessarily have to set up altars to practice. You can use any table that's available to you. Um, a old trick that a lot of people do in a lot of traditions is you could have a cupboard or a cabinet and you could have your altar inside there and you can open those doors when you are using it and keep it closed to the public if you wanna keep people out of there. You can even use like, um, if it's a cabinet or a cupboard that doesn't have a door, you can hang a curtain or something over it. 
The reason that I suggest that is because if this is going to be something that you really feel drawn to and that you continue to pursue, you're going to want to have a steady space that you devote your your work to because this is going to become um, a spiritual practice for you. Even though you don't have to use it in conjunction with any religion, you can use this practice with or without any religion or with or without any spiritual practice. It does become kind of a, a meditative and it becomes a, a, a spiritual practice of its own in a lot of ways over time. And if you devote one space to it, that space is going to be imbued with the energy and the power and the intentions that you put into that work every time you go to it. So going back to that space over and over again is going to end up heightening the energy of the work that you do. So it is helpful to have one space, but if you don't want to or you can't right now, that's fine. You don't have to rush into anything. You can use any table, any surface. You can set it up and break it down as you need to. Um, there are also lots of ways to have an altar that are really that are not intrusive, that don't look overtly like, hey, here I am, I'm practicing a bunch of magic. Um, you can have an altar that is fairly, you know, innocu in innocuous. Um, it doesn't have to have a lot of stuff in it, especially in the conjure tradition. You know, you can just have natural items would be enough. Maybe a root, maybe a stone, um, maybe one white candle. I mean, that doesn't necessarily look like anything to anyone who's not trained to perceive it. But, but would the space, same space work for different saints? Yeah, the same space can work for different saints for sure. Um, most saints get along with each other, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Um, as your practice develops and your relationships with the saints and the spirits develop, that's when things are going to change and that's when you're going to need to put a little bit more um, thought into your space, but you don't have to rush into any of that. <clears throat> and bringing up the saints, you know, I do want to emphasize it is about building your relationship with them. So think about that too, because the space that you use for them, it is helpful to dedicate it to them so that you're really showing them that honor and that focus, that respect, that dedication um, that you need to imbue into the energetic connection between you and them to build and develop and strengthen and deepen that relationship. This is about a relationship with those saints. Um, it's not transactional. It's not like I give you this statue and I give you this water, so you give me this. Um, really focus on the fact that it's a relationship. The only reason I bring that up is because that's another thing you may want to consider when considering the space that you're using for that relationship. Now, that being said, you don't necessarily need um, any specific space to work on a relationship with a spirit or saint. You can do that in nature. You can do that um, when you're lying in your bed. You can do that when you're sitting on your couch, sitting in your backyard, because a lot of that is about um, what you're focusing on and the communication with them. Now, the reason we use the statues and things is because it helps us focus to have a physical representation in addition to what I was saying earlier, that that space then becomes imbued with that energy and with that intention and helps to strengthen the energy and the connection. So those are some things to think about in consideration of that. And if you have any follow-up questions about that, JC, Moji, let me know what they are. I'm happy to elaborate further. Hi, Chris. Welcome. Yes, of course, you may ask a question. Everybody may ask a question. Our live spirit chats are a chance to participate in a group coaching session and ask your questions about your spiritual development, your spiritual practice, and all kinds of things related. You can ask questions about my practice or myself as well. So whatever your question is, you can definitely ask it. Thanks for being here. No, no problem, you're not dominating. There weren't really any other questions yet, so I'm definitely happy to go in depth and, and have a discussion about things. It's no problem, that's what I'm here for.
Hi, thanks for joining. For those of you who maybe didn't hear or haven't been here before, I'm going to say one more time right now that our live spirit chats are a chance to participate in a group coaching session and ask questions about your spiritual development, developing your spiritual practice, developing your spiritual path, working with ancestors, spirit guides, saints, guardian spirits, guardian angels, doing dream work, practicing magic, candle magic, divination, meditation, and all kinds of things in between and related. So go ahead and ask your questions if you have them. How old were you when you began your practice? I was about 16. I was 15 when I started dabbling. I was about 16 when I started um, experimenting with and learning about what's considered high magic, ceremonial magic in the, my cat is like gonna knock this whole thing over, ceremonial magic in the Kabbalistic and Thelemic traditions. Um, I've since been far removed from that and on a completely different path, but that was how I started and it started when I was 16. Um, <clears throat> I had natural gifts all of my life and I had practices and things that I was naturally drawn to when I was little and I had a system of divination that I used with rocks that I created myself um, as well as communicating with and being perceiving and being aware of spirit entities and reincarnation and things of that nature as well as um, having some psychic abilities. So those were always there. <clears throat> and I think they are always there from birth for a lot of people, but I think that people either chalk that up at, to like the imagination of a child, or they learn to ignore it, or they grow out of it, and they don't nurture it, and it goes away. So there's a variety of things that happen there. But for me, um, I always practiced it, and I always nurtured it, so it's always been there since I was little. Hi, thanks for joining. What are the best herbs to include in an altar dedicated to financial abundance? So um, I'll just add, answer your question specifically. I was gonna, I was gonna say you don't have to have herbs on an altar. And also that it may be important to contemplate where are you putting these herbs and how are you using them. But let me say um, good herbs to use for financial abundance are mint, uh, that's like, that's the, the generic, everybody knows it, the easy to obtain go-to herb for money. Um, I like to use patchouli. Patchouli is strongly represented to wealth. Um, patchouli is a really strong uh, herb as well, or a strong plant. I use what's called patchouli bark, which means all of the parts of the patchouli, it's the roots and the stems and every, every part of the plant. One of the reasons that patchouli is associated with money is because of the very strong and prolific root structure. Things that are grounded in that way and things that spread easily and grow big and abundant quickly, those things are related to wealth and prosperity and abundance because of the abundance and the strength of the plant, as well as due to the fact that the plant is rooted in the earth in such a way. Um, so think of the earth element and being grounded in our material world. Another plant that is highly associated with money is bamboo. Um, I don't have a particular affinity to bamboo, but a lot of people do. And it is really important for you to use the things that you have an affinity with. Um, a lot of people like those green herbs like mint and they really stick with that sort of thing. But keep in mind that things that are related to fiery energy can also be strongly related to gold and wealth. Frankincense is one that's related to wealth that is um, highly underutilized. Will you be in San Marcos tonight? I will not be in San Marcos tonight. Is there something going on in San Marcos tonight? Is it a witch's market? If it is, I am not signed up for that one. Um, I do maybe one or two of them a month. I'm not doing any this month. I might be doing two next month. I'll be sure to let you all know if I'm going to be there. I am looking for a spellcaster. Can you help me? Do you know someone? I am a spellcaster. I can help you. I do know someone. <laughs> if for some reason that I can't help you or it's a case that's not right for me, which would be very rare, 
I can also recommend you to other people, but I recommend that you contact me for a free service consultation. And my email is inquiries at missmelinda.com, inquiries at missmelinda.com. You can also quick click on the email button. It's underneath the highlights in my Instagram profile. So there'll be all those round highlight buttons. And then underneath that, there's a purple email button. You can click to that. It goes straight to me. I'll be happy to discuss your situation by email and then determine the best approach to maximize your success. But be prepared. We do need to discuss in order to figure that out. <clears throat> Hello, I have a question. I'm curious on how to cultivate with existing gifts such as clairvoyance. What type of services do I offer? Well, I offer all, all types of services and I do offer um, coaching, spiritual coaching to specifically help with developing things like this. So the coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions are definitely available as well as other types of coaching. Um, for some people, and this might be good for you, I'm kind of picking up on, for some people, the written report that I give, it's a written coaching session. Sometimes that is the best thing for somebody who's kind of already on the path, already has identified their gifts and already knows that they want to work on it. And what I do is draw upon all of the research that I've been doing over the last like 18 years and put together some exercises, some meditations, some energy work, some tips and some guidance that you can start utilizing. Basically, I put together a plan for you so that you can fast track this development as well as learn to manage it and actually use it in your daily life. So that may be a good thing for you. Um, so working with your clairvoyance though, the first thing that I'm gonna recommend is that you have a meditation practice. You probably already do, but the more that you meditate, the more that you are going to be in tune with these kinds of gifts, um, the more that you are going to be able to still your mind and actually pay attention. Very often when clairvoyance is developing, you will begin to see um, visions when you're meditating. So keep that in mind, but there's a lot of other things that you can do as well. And if you have any follow-up questions, then please do let me know. Hi, Witch Luna, nice to see you here, sweetheart. Yeah, look, so there's a Witch's Market tonight. I'm not gonna be at that one. I was at the San Marcos one once, and I really enjoyed it, and I will probably go back. I'll probably go back when it's a little bit warmer outside. But I only do like one or two of them a month and sometimes I skip months because I do need a lot of time for my business and my personal practices as well. Um, like I said, I'll probably be doing two witches markets next month. Yeah, the San Marcos Buzz Mill is the only place where we have the witches markets in San Marcos and I love that location. Recently read about the use of orgasms and making spells stronger. What are your thoughts on this? My thoughts are that that's a really powerful technique. It's a very old technique. It's something that people have been doing for a long, long time. It, it is called sex magic, whether you do it alone or with somebody else, because you can do it alone or with somebody else. And the basic premise of the technique is that you're using that energy from the orgasm to actually direct your intention or direct your magic or direct your spell, right? Because in practicing magic, one of the things that we're doing is raising and directing energy. So this, this technique is just using sex as a way to raise energy and then using the orgasm as a way to direct that energy. And if that's something that you feel drawn to, then you should definitely explore it. It's certainly a powerful practice. And if you have any um, follow-up questions about that, I'm happy to answer them. I'm hoping the video hasn't frozen up because the screen went kind of dark, but also my cat keeps like almost knocking over this whole thing. Do you suggest some books for beginners in the magic world? I do, I do. I actually have a whole list of book recommendations for different categories of spiritual development and different categories of magic and things of that nature. So. What I would recommend is that you drop me a line 
um, perhaps via email or perhaps on Facebook. You know what I'll do? I'll just go ahead and post the, that list of book recommendations on, on Facebook later today. So if you're not following me, go ahead and do that. It's Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services. Um, it might be Miss Melinda's Spiritual Worker and Advisor, something of that nature, but you should be able to find it by uh, Googling my business name. And I will remember to post that list of book recommendations. Also, if you have a specific path that you're interested in or a specific practice that you're interested in, go ahead and throw, throw those details out there and I might have something specific to offer you right off the, the bat. Do you ever use any book of shadows? And if so, which one would you recommend? So a book of shadows is a book that you keep for yourself, that you write yourself. Now, some people publish their own book of shadows, right? So that you can see what their practice is about and the information that they've gathered over the years of their practice. And um, that's interesting and that can be really relevant to help you gain knowledge and help you be inspired but i don't specifically recommend anybody else's book of shadows um what i do have are several volumes of of they're not necessarily official books of shadows not all of them i think i have two two bos's and then a bunch of just journals of spiritual journaling, of information that I've gathered, of experiences that I've had, of practices that I have experimented with and what the results were and things of that nature going all the way back to high school. And I highly recommend keeping those journals and keeping that research. I think it's, comes, it's very, very useful. Even recently, I went back and was reading some of the things that I wrote down when I was in high school and I was like, wow, I had forgotten about this. Also, I had been studying and researching and writing down information that I wasn't using at that time, but now is very, very useful to me. So it's interesting how these things can play out and work together. And I definitely recommend some kind of spiritual journaling or an official book of shadows if that's what you feel drawn to. You're welcome. I hope it was helpful. Definitely coming as images and shapes. Oh, okay, so right now you may not be experiencing full on visions. Well, images could definitely be, be a full on vision, but it sounds like you're also seeing shapes so you're not always sure what it is. You could, uh, now, are you seeing this stuff when your eyes are closed or when your eyes are open? Because if you're seeing shapes that you're not sure how you can identify when your eyes are open, then that can actually be the spirit world. So it's still clairvoyance, but it's clairvoyance as well as opening up to seeing the spirit world through your clairvoyance. So there's a couple of different things that could be going on here. Some people, when they um, are developing their clairvoyance, use a, an exercise that can be really helpful and that is to imagine close your eyes and meditate and center do some kind of beginning exercises to really center and focus yourself and calm yourself and then imagine behind your eyes like across your forehead across your third eye because your third eye is what's going to be associated with your clairvoyance a blank screen and on this blank, blank screen, imagine yourself unrolling it and opening it up and placing it there behind your forehead, behind your eyes. And this is something that you can open and close whenever you want. And then focus on that blank screen and focus on seeing visions. Ask to see the things, the guidance or the messages or the images that you most need at this time or practice asking specific questions and seeing what images come up as an answer to those questions. So that's one um, powerful way that you can use to focus on developing your clairvoyance. And for many people, it works very, very well. And then when you're done, you close it up and then you always keep in mind and set the intention that that screen is there for you to open and close as you choose. You're welcome, you're welcome. Have you ever read the Key of Solomon? So. Did you find it useful? I haven't, and it's on my list. Actually, this is kind of um, synchronicity because I have been very, very much thinking about Solomon lately, 
and I've been reading about the Queen of Sheba and I've been reading about Solomon here and there and everywhere and I've been looking at the signs of Solomon's temple that are on the in the tarot card in the ma magician card there are um, symbols that come from Solomon's temple so yeah it's been very much on my mind I want to read the key of Solomon honestly I should have done it by now it's on my list um, I do think that I will find it useful. I've heard so many good things about it. If you have anything that you'd like to share about it, go ahead. I'd be curious to know. There is this, there's this boy named Alex and I wanted to know if I would date him. So that's something that would be better handled in a personal reading. I'm not offering readings in our coaching session, but what I can do is offer you kind of advice or guidance about the situation. It seems like if you have a question about it, then there's a reason that you're hesitant. Maybe it's that you're not sure if he likes you, or maybe you know, you're not sure if it's even a good idea. Sometimes being hesitant then like that about a situation is already sort of a, um, not it could be a red flag, but it could also be bringing your attention to, to something that needs to be kind of worked out or worked on in this situation. So I would encourage you to think about why you're unsure or why you're hesitant about this situation before you go ahead and proceed with any actions. And if you don't know if he's interested in you or how he feels, then put yourself out there a little bit further and send him some signs and, and you know pay attention to how he acts. Try talking to him, try sending some signs to him that you're interested, and then you're going to learn a lot more about the situation. If you'd like a reading, go ahead and contact me via email. I emptied the sugar from a sweetening jar. I'm not sure if the spell stops there or not because my ex still seems to be hung up on me. Well, do you mean that you emptied the whole jar um, or just the sugar? It sounds like you emptied the whole jar. Um, yeah, the spell kind of stops there, like the energy that you're putting into the spell stops there. But the way that magic works, the energy from a particular spell or working, it continues to build afterwards. That's why the results of like a candle service, for instance, may not be fully visible until like three months after it's done, right? So these things build over time because it takes the universe or spirit, however you want to look at it, time to kind of work on and rearrange that energy in our lives and help us with the conditions necessary to achieve our goal. So even if you emptied it, yeah, you stopped putting energy towards it, but that energy is still out there and has been building for some time. Um, if you feel like you put a spell on him and now you don't want the results of that spell, then you're going to need to do something to reverse it or break the spell. I burned the petition and emptied the jar outside. The sugar blew around me. Yeah, I feel like if you are feeling that the results of this spell are still affecting you in a way that you don't want, then you're going to have to reverse or break the spell. <clears throat> yeah, there's always specific ways that you can use. So the question is, is there a specific time or way to dispose of a sweetening charm? The answer is yes, there are always specific ways, methods, and places that you can use for disposing of the remnants of specific types of spells and workings. Um, but you know, you can get as in depth with that as you want or not. Um, the thing is for a sweetening jar, if you didn't want the results or energy of that jar around you, or you didn't want his energy around you anymore, then you would want to dispose of it away from you, away from your house, far away from you. When you want to keep something close to you, that's when you bury it in your own yard or close to you or by your front door, something of that nature. But if you want to get something away from you, then you dispose of it away from you. Hi y'all, thanks for joining. If you haven't been here before, the live spirit chat is a chance to participate in a group coaching session and get your questions answered about anything related to your spiritual development, developing your spiritual path, developing, strengthening, and trusting your intuition, your psychic gifts, or your spiritual gifts. 
um, working with your ancestors, working with saints, working with spirit guides and guardian spirits, guardian angels, divination, dream work, meditation, folk magic, candle magic, all kinds of things related in, and in between. So if you have a question, go ahead and don't be shy. I'm happy to answer them to the best of my ability. So you, one really simple thing that you could do, JC Moji, um, if you are wanting to now reverse the effects of the spell, is to burn a reversal candle. And depending on where you live, you can find candles like that pretty easily at the grocery store. Um, but you know, if not, if not in your area, you can get a reversal candle online. I'm recommending a vigil candle, not a um, two-tone double action pillar candle, but a glass encased vigil candle, a reversal candle, and set the intentions that you want to go ahead and no, you don't want to reverse these effects because you can send that, then you could be sending that energy back to yourself. So you need to actually break this spell. So a reversal could work, but if you're not that, um, if, if you're not that practiced at this, then you don't want to reverse it and send the energy back to yourself. So what you really want to do is undo the energy. So I would suggest just burning a black candle, a plain black vigil candle, and setting the intention that it's a spell breaker candle and that you are breaking the spell. What kind of ritual do you attract, do you recommend to attract money? So, um, let me just say that the way that I use ritual in my practice is to indicate something that I practice habitually over a period of time. It's not a ritual in the sense that you would use it in um, specific traditions of high magic or ritual magic because what I practice is folk magic. So folk magic doesn't have um, big in-depth rituals, what I do is more of a spiritual practice. But one ritual, meaning habit, that I implement in order to attract money is a sweetening jar that I make um, dedicated to myself and dedicated to my business in which I put lucky coins and business cards and tarot cards and herbs related to money and honey and syrup and sugar and all the traditional things that go into a sweetening jar. And then I burn an orange candle on that. I have spirit money underneath it. I have all kinds of charms around it that relate to money, including a charm bag full of lucky coins that I've collected from around the world. And I burn an orange candle on it that I dress with money oil. And I put my energy and intention into that candle. And I say a prayer every time that I light the candle. Um, there are lots of ways that you can, lots of things that you can do to attract money. A lot of people like to use a bay leaf. A bay leaf is a really simple spell that you can do. Just write your money petition on a bay leaf and then burn it and scatter that to the wind. You can um, write a really simple petition on spirit money and then burn that as an offering to your ancestors. There's a lot of different things that you can do um, you know, a, a lot of really simple but powerful things that you can do to attract money. <clears throat> I noticed every time I did a communication spell on him, I also felt the effects. Is that normal? Yeah, I mean, it, you're the one doing the spell, so yeah, it's normal for you to feel the effects, you know? That's why a lot of people don't work magic for themselves because when you're too emotionally involved, you're putting like too much of your own feelings into it. That can affect everything. And I think one of the biggest things that's going on with you is that your own, it's a situation that you're too close to. So some of the things that you're feeling an effect from are actually the result of your own feelings and your own energy, right? But yeah, if you're doing a love spell, especially if you included your own name, then you're a part of the spell as well. What's the best candle to use before a test if you have a learning disability? 
I would use something for clarity and, and it doesn't have to be a specific candle. I'm not going to recommend like a test taking candle or anything, but what I would do is burn a yellow candle for mental clarity and I would dress it with an oil that is related to purification. Um, you could even, lemongrass would be a nice one, something that is mentally stimulating and related to purification. You could use frankincense. You could use rosemary. Rosemary is very men mentally stimulating. It also helps for memory. There's an old um, saying that, that uh, old phrase that goes along with rosemary. It's rosemary for remembrance. Rosemary helps with memory. So that would be a really good one. You could do a combination of rosemary and lemongrass for mental stimulation. All things related to clarity. So that's what I would do. A yellow candle with rosemary and lemongrass. And then just set the intention that this is for your concentration. This is for your clarity. This is for your mental capabilities and that you are going to have a clear and focused and calm mind during this exam, that you're going to be able to recall the information that you need to, that your memory is gonna be on point, and that your brain-hand coordination is going to be working in harmony and balance, and then just trust. There's also a poppet spell or a doll baby spell that I really like that has to do with um, absorbing information and that's basically that you just make a poppet or a doll baby of yourself and then um, you put candles around it that represent the information that you want to absorb or the results that you want to have using blue and yellow together would be a really good combination because blue is for calmness and peace and being centered and then the yellow is for the mental stimulation and mental clarity using those two things together would be good energies to kind of balance this and, and harmonize your intentions for really learning absorbing and also executing that that learning and absorbing i'm gonna look at this candle real quick okay um so yeah i would that if you wanted to get more elaborate, you could put those candles around your doll baby and really focus on that. You name the doll baby in your name. Some people baptize it, right? Name it in your name. Put a link to yourself in that doll baby, like your hair or your nail clippings. And then really imagine that the energy from those candles around your doll are imbuing you with the qualities and the energies that you need in order to face and tackle this test with success. Can someone fall in love with me even if they currently hate me for something I did in the past? That's a, um, there's no like cut and dry yes or no black and white answer to that. The thing is if there's been a lot of negative energy between you, um, a lot of difficulty in the past, a lot of, um, strife, then some healing needs to take place and magic or spiritual support can definitely assist with that healing and definitely assist with removing some of the negative and unwanted energies from the past between you as well as opening up the energetic connection between the two of you and cleansing the ener energetic connection around you. It's not impossible for them to love you again, but the thing is you've got to get to the root of the problem always. Don't just address the symptoms. So if there's been a lot of bad stuff between you, it needs to be cleansed, it needs to be healed, and then once that happens, you'll have a lot better chances of opening up the energetic connection between the two of you and getting things flowing in the right direction again. I just opened up a salon with a friend. Her and I hear rice is good luck, but we're not sure how to use it, but we're super excited to start this new venture. Awesome. I'm excited for you. Congratulations. So lucky rice is the best way to use rice for good luck. And lucky rice is something that's used a lot in hoodoo. And what it is, is it there's a lots of different ways to make it, but the main thing is you dye it green. 
and you use items inside of the rice that relate to money. A lot of people use um, like green glitter. You can get confetti that has little sparkly dollar signs in it, right? And you make yourself a lucky rice. Um, you can uh, you also use herbs and conjure powders that are related to money. Otherwise, if you just have rice on your own, the best use for plain rice on its own is actually to absorb negative and unwanted energies. That could be helpful for your business as well. Um, the best way to do that is to put that rice in a charm bag, something of that nature, and hang it by the front door. A lot of people actually just put a bowl of rice by the front door, and that's intended to absorb any negative or unwanted energies as people are coming in. The thing to keep in mind about that is that rice is going to absorb energy, so you can't. You have to change it out like once a month. If, if you you could do every two or three months, but if you have a lot of people coming in and out, then you want to change it out once a month, right? And get rid of that unwanted energy. You want to um, dispose of that rice far away from the salon because you don't want that energy near the salon. You could make a witch's bottle with rice. I've done that in the past. Um, just get a clear bottle, put rice in there along with, um, this is kind of my own version of Lucky Rice, put some rice in there along with some herbs and some powders, some stones that all relate to money and keep that around in the windowsill. And keep in mind that what you're actually doing with that rice is you're focusing on its powers of expansion. One of the reasons that people associate rice with money is because of the power that it has to expand. So what you're doing when you're putting it in a bottle with these other ingredients is focusing on the fact that the rice is absorbing the power of these other ingredients and creating energetic expansion. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Your English is fine. No worries. I bought and used a Hyde on the Conqueror candle. First and only experience. The last night I kept dozing off and dreamt three times that the wax burned out and left nothing behind. First and the last night I kept dozing off and dreamt three times that the wax burned out and left nothing behind. Okay, are you actually going to sleep with your candle burning though? Because if you are, I do not recommend that. Don't leave your candle unattended. No matter what any tradition says, no matter what anyone says about that you have to let a candle keep burning until it's fully extinguished, yeah, keep burning it until it's fully extinguished, but put it out when you're not around. Don't blow it out. Use like a candle snuffer or a cup, but put it out when you're not around because it's not safe to leave candles unattended. Even if they're vigil candles, I've seen them crack and explode, etc. So safety first. Um, <clears throat> your dream though, it would be interpreted as meaning good results. If the wax burned out and there's nothing at all left behind, it also means that it's unlikely to have any blockages or obstacles, especially on any unwanted negative surprises associated with that candle or with that working. I'm probably going to have to go check on this candle behind me. Speaking of safety, I don't know how close we are to the end of the video. I'm just going to try to do this and leave the video on and come right back. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So, let's see, where are we? The glass was completely empty. Is this a significant sign of something? Yeah, it's if the when the candle, the wax completely burns up, it's a positive sign of your petition or your um, prayers or desires being heard and being responded to. And when there is wax remaining, it can indicate that the situation is challenging 
or stubborn or that there are blockages or obstacles present. So having no wax means that things are good. Hi, spiritual gangster. Yeah, you're welcome on the rice. I'm glad it's helpful. You're welcome. Okay, so no more questions right now. I think maybe some new people have joined, and if you haven't been here, this is our live spirit chats are a chance for you to... Looks like we paused for a minute, and I think we're back up now. So I was saying that our live spirit chats are a chance to participate in group coaching sessions and to get your questions answered about developing your spiritual path and developing your spiritual gifts and developing your spiritual connection. And what, you didn't get the response to what? To the, um, to the vigil? So it's a positive sign when all of the wax is burnt up. If wax is remaining, then it can indicate that the energy is stubborn or that there are challenges or like stagnant energy. And if when the energy, when the wax burns all the way out, it's a good sign. It means that, it means that your prayers or petitions or desires are being heard and accepted. It means they're received. If the wax remains, and, and it refuses to be burnt out, then it's stubborn energy and it can indicate a blockage or obstacle. If we're getting to the point now where the video is pausing a lot, we're having um, connection difficulties, I'm gonna go ahead and log off. And I thank you all so much for joining. I thank you. I thank you for your questions. I'm happy that we have this chance to interact. I really enjoy your questions. I really enjoy our conversation. And I'm grateful for all of you. And I hope that you have a great weekend and stay blessed. Thanks.